So in my spare time during quarantine at night, since it's nice and bright here in the shop and warm and dry, all that kind of stuff, been working on some deer stands. So that's a, that's a water tank. I killed a 157 inch 10 point out of it. I guess two years ago it was on the ground, but we're lifting everything uh, because it's been clear cut, the timber has. So we need to be up over the brush pile. So put them on platforms. As you can see, I bought the brackets, messed up and bought two before brackets, but I made them work, braced it up. Um, you can buy these online. Like I paid $35 a kit for those brackets and those fit the four before. So I bought 10 foot four befores, cut them in half, and then built a two by six frame. And I have some old free five eighths OSB with the silver on top um, board up there. And those are blinds are four foot wide by six foot long. And you know, you can see the tote there, it fits on there. Just got them slightly braced right there where you'll sit, and then right there where the blind screws on for the landing. Uh, the other blinds are metal. There's the wife's new car. And I set these in five gallon buckets and put a half a bag of quick crete. It's about 40 pounds of quick crete in each one. And that way, when we get up in the hills, we can sturdy it up. So, and since we're making these for little kids and, and people that can't get around very good, we built, or I guess I built staircases for them. So that's what I wanted to show you today was kind of laying out stairs. So I have the stair stringers right here. I've done one set, I have two more sets to go. I've got that set, I just got done cutting. So, setting out or laying out stair stringers. I learned this when I was in ninth grade ag, or attempted to learn it. One thing that you need, is the internet or the Swanson's blue book. Okay, if you flip in the book, it tells you laying out rafters, laying out stairs, all that kind of good stuff. And it tells you how to use your big, big square. So as a general rule, um, you want your, your step, that's your rise plus your tread to equal somewhere around 17. You know, that, that gives you like a 10 inch step when your foot, you need about 10 inches of step there and you don't want to rise any more than about seven inches at a time. Okay. So it, it took me a little bit. What you have to do is start off measuring your height of your platform and that is from the ground. So from my concrete up to here, okay, that was my height. And then you had to figure out what tread you wanted. Well, I knew I was going to use a tube of 10, and a tube of 10 is not 10 inches wide. A tube of 10, I'll show you. A tube of 10, after it gets finished, is nine and about an eighth, okay? Depends on how dry it is. So, normally you would want about an inch overhang right here or toe on that and then you'd put a kick plate that way you don't stick your foot through it like in my house i have a three quarter um inch wide board three quarter thick that goes right here that's your kick plate and your toe comes out and covers that up then has about a quarter an eighth of an inch to a quarter overlap so i know i wanted about an eighth overlap on this just to make it work out right and have enough tread in my house, I used uh, tuba 12 treads, but we're using tuba 10s here. So I knew what I wanted my tread to be. So I knew this had to be nine inches wide. So I do a little math there and I had to divide. I wanted to get around 17. And there's some calculators you can use on your phone. You can type all that in, it gets you close. So what I came up with um, is I wanted to Go up every seven inches so i ended up with this many steps so let's count them so you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i have ten steps now you always have one step that'll be just a tad bit different so you see my first step right here is just a little bit short okay 
So that, it only had to be a quarter inch shorter to make it work out perfect, to go nine inches and up seven inches. Because um, you're essentially making triangles. And this worked out to be a 36 degree angle going up. And you don't want any steeper than that because it's hard to walk. But to make this add up to where my top tread is the same height as my landing, notice how this is down, okay? So you had to subtract this thickness, which was an inch and a half. So I just subtract inch and a half and it works out perfect. And you have a pretty normal step, okay? So that's that. And when you get ready, you can use an, uh, an old time carpenter square. It actually works better for this, but I didn't have one laying here. So I used my, my big T. And I lay that on there like that. And I get my nine inches lined up. And I get my seven inches lined up. And you draw a triangle. Now, I did one the right way and did it perfect, okay? Or perfect as, you know, as close as I can do it. And then I used it as a pattern to do my other five, okay? When you have a pattern, I went back and I traced it with a carpenter's pencil. So I traced it. Now that's gonna be about an eighth of an inch wider. As you notice, like right here is a bad spot right there. You know, it didn't come to a perfect point, okay? We have to cut on the inside of the line. Anytime you do a pattern, you don't need to cut on the outside like we normally would to put that saw kerf over there. We're gonna bring that saw kerf on the inside of the line and it'll work out perfect. And the big thing is I'm not using my pattern on this set, that was one that I traced. So as long as I do that one and this one, the same cut path, then it'll work out. Let me show you how to run a skill saw. Hopefully I can do it. So this is a portable circular saw. It's a Milwaukee. I like the Milwaukee's. Let's see if I can do this. So I'm gonna line it up and we'll go on the inside of the line. Are you ready? I'm wearing my safety glasses, hope you are. kind of hard so now i'm going to go on each one and i'm going to cut all the way up to my corner now i'm not going to be able to cut it out because we're trying to cut a square cut with a circular saw so i'll show you that in a second so now i'll take the reciprocating saw i've got all those cut and i put him right there and i'm going to cut up to the corner This side. And it falls out. And then you have a square cut. So that's the next step. We gotta do all ten. So this is a pass load gun. Um, it, it's just pretty much a nail gun. So these are my galvanized pass load nails. Okay, they're three and a quarter inches long. Um, that's about as long as you can get in one of these guns. So it has a battery, it has a rechargeable battery. And up here, it has a gas canister. And the gas canister, it works like a small engine. Fills gas into a, into a cylinder, battery makes it spark, it goes boom, okay? So I need to reload it with nails. Pull that back, take my nails. Okay, now I'm lined up right here. Now, I'm not lined up right there. What's gonna to have to happen is I'm gonna to have to shift the stringers back and forth till I get them square. So we'll put that right there. Boom, there it is. And you can set the depth or the penetration on that. So that's, that's a pass load gun. And these are the stair treads. All right, so I'm back, I got that done. And now I'm moving on the handrail, okay? So in the little book, it talks about handrails being, if I can find it, somewhere in here. Uh, the handrail should be 30 inches to 34 inches above the nosing of the steps and 34 inches high on the landing. Okay, so nosing of the steps. The nosing of the step would be that part right there. Okay, 
that one is around the 34 mark okay that was a little tall it's more than what i was shooting for um so i'm gonna i'm gonna bump that down some so i'm gonna get my measurement my measurement from bottom of the stringer to top of the tread or the nosing is 15 inches so i'm gonna add that to 30 okay and that'll be on the short side okay so i'll be measuring from short side to long side would be 30 plus 15 which would be 45. now what angle is that you ask well, if you measure it on your stringer, it's a 36 degree angle. Okay, if you measure that one right there. So how do you do that? Well, you use your speed square. You could use a, an old timey square too. So I bump it up there in the corner, that's my pivot point. Now, this is like a protractor, like you'd use in geometry or, or math class. And see that 35, I'm gonna go one mark past that. I'm on a 36, make sure I'm still here on my pivot point. I want to move, and up. Oh, it moved. Okay, it's hard to film, and mark with a pencil. So there's my 36 degree angle. Then we'll cut that, and then we'll measure. Okay, I measured from there to here, and that's what I come out as, okay? Make sure you're going in the right direction. So I got my 36 over here, 45 right there, and we should be good to go. All right, so, our handrail supports are up. Now this next step is not, I mean, completely necessary. It would be if you're in a house, and that is this angle cut right here. Okay. But hey, I kinda wanna do it. This is practice, so that's cutting a bevel. So I'm gonna loosen that off, and I'm gonna adjust it. And remember, our angle is 36 degrees. So, about right. I know, I know, I need to get a better way to hold my camera. 36 degrees. Okay. Now, I know I want this to be my top, so that's all wrong. Okay, so I want to flip my board over. I want to put that ugly side on the bottom, and I know my hand will be grabbing right here away from that ugly side. Okay, so this is going to be the top. Of, I've made it the top. Now, what we can do, since I can't see where I'm going, I learned just by measuring this. You can do this. Where's my, where's my square? Yeah, get your square. Now, if you measure, I'm going to set you down. Yep, it's at three inches. So, what you can do. Lay your speed square right here, and you can make your mark on three inches. And I know this is a 10 foot board, and I'm gonna take just a tad bit off. It's a little over 10 foot, it doesn't really matter. And we'll have about six inches overhang on each side. Lay me a mark. That's not where I'm cutting, okay? That's my guide mark. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna put my base and my slide right there. Or I'm gonna slide my base right along that mark and that's gonna give me a square cut. So that's what I'm doing. There's my bevel cut. Perfectly square and on that 36 degree angle. Okay. So now the project completed. So I'm glad y'all y'all watched it. Please subscribe, share, all that kind of stuff. Turn your alerts on, notifications, that kind of deal, so you can see all the new videos. Uh, we give a farm update. I went and picked up a new spray rig for the school farm today. Uh, my wife helped. She drove the truck to, uh, to escort me. So that, that, was a, that was a fun day. Update on her. We're expecting baby Cora pretty much any day now. So she is ready to be here. So have fun. Keep making every toe push.